Welcome to the channel. This is Scott K, and today we're going to be rebuilding a keyboard. But not just any keyboard, this keyboard, the KMAC. This particular KMAC is actually the Dang Wang KMAC 1, which at one point served as an inspiration for many keyboard hobbyists and enthusiasts. About eight years old now, all those years of usage, it needs a little bit of refreshing to get it up to 2020 standards when you switches, stabilizers, and some case foam. Decades worth of usage, it's a testament to the durability and longevity of mechanical keyboards and their components. Let's get started. The keyboard is currently fitted with some Cherry Ergo clears and some Cherry Push-In stabilizers. Before we tear down, we'll take a look to see how these held up with a quick typing test. You can just hear how worn the spacebar stabilizers are. We're going to be reusing the GMK Doge keycaps and swapping out the cherry switches for some glorious pandas. Let's get started with this teardown and start getting these keycaps off. We will also be reusing this titanium spacebar because, yeah, titanium. Here's a good look at the Clack Mr. Friday Artisan. With all the keycaps removed, we could start disassembling the case. And the top case comes off to reveal that the K-Mac is actually a bottom mount plate. Start undoing all the screws to remove the plate and the PCB assembly from the bottom of the case. Now you can lift up the plate and the PCB assembly to expose the bearing case underneath. After so many years, some of these switches start to fail and it's about time for them to be swapped out for something newer. Now that everything is out, we could start the old oh so fun desoldering process. 
I'm just using a standard soldering iron to do this with an Engineer SS02 solder sounder. The soft silicone tip really helps to make a tight seal and does a really good job of removing the solder. I thought you want to sit here and watch me desolder this entire board, so let's use a little bit of editing magic to jump through this. Now with all the switches and stabilizers removed, you can see the nice anodized KMAC plate here. Nice gray color. And the nice black PCB board that we're going to be working with as well. For stabilizers, I'll be using the Duroc Smoky Gray Stabilizers. Overall, these stabilizers do a very good job, they're very smooth, and the tolerances are actually pretty nice as well. Before we start the lubing process, I like to take everything out and just kind of sort things around so I know exactly where everything is and makes it a little bit easier for me to start the lubing and the assembly process. With the stabilizers, I like to lightly lube the inside of the housing as well as the sliders with Crytox 205 grade zero. This helps to reduce the friction between the housing and the slider and overall delivers a really nice and smooth experience. For the wires, I like to use Permatex dielectric grease. I actually use a syringe to apply the grease into the housing. This helps to really overall minimize the messiness and put the grease where you really want it to go. Once you have all the stabilizers lubed and ready to go, you can start placing them into the PCB. One thing to note is that the PCB actually has two different sized holes. The hook side goes to the larger side, and also the screw side goes into the smaller hole, that's where actually you'll screw it in. Once all the stabilizers in, you could take your plate and do a test fit to ensure that there is no obstructions and everything is fitting perfectly fine. For this build, I'll be using a set of lubed Glorious Pandas. These switches actually have a tendency to have some leaf ping, but watch my other video to see how you could actually get rid of them. Now you can start taking the switches and start placing them into your plate. After this comes soldering. Once again, I'm not going to show you the whole entire soldering process. I'm going to be using a little bit of editing magic to fast forward this whole entire process to the finished product. For this build, we decided to use a linear switch for the spacebar with a heavier spring to support the overall heavier titanium spacebar. In order to dampen the unwanted noises of aluminum cases, we're going to be using some foam to line the bottom. For most of my builds, I like to use an o-ring to reduce the hard mounting contact between surfaces as well as screws. In this situation, I'm using nitro o-rings.
With the plate assembly screwed in, now we could actually place the top case to complete the overall assembly. Complete the assembly process by screwing together the top and the bottom. Finally, we reinstall all the keycaps to complete the build. And we're done. The K-Mac has now new switches as well as new stabilizers and everything else is a little bit tighter than what it used to be. Even after 8 years, this is still a very nice keyboard. I hope you enjoyed that transformation. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'm always working on new content to share with you. Thank you for watching. Let's end this video with a quick typing test to show off the return of the Mac.